Hey everybody, my name's Aaron. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a bit of a problem uh, with the amount of work that I'm doing at work. I work for a startup, it's very busy. And uh, with everything else going on around the house, I haven't had time to put out episodes as frequently as I would like to. The other problem is, at once a week I go to e-waste at a particular day, it's usually Wednesday, and I generally find one or two or three things there that I can bring home and I think I'm going to make an episode on. The problem is I can never make episodes fast enough to catch up with the amount of stuff that I'm bringing in. That's causing a lot of clutter here at the Retro Hack Shack. I've got stuff, Mac stuff stacked up on the floor at this point. Um, I've got some other stuff stacked up in front of the garage door and I've got some other stuff uh, stacked up over on the other side of the garage. So I had all this stuff cleaned up and now it's getting really junky again and I need to do something about it. So I don't know if that's two or three problems now, but I hope it to solve it with this particular video and subsequent videos to come. What I'm going to be doing is something I'm going to be calling E-Waste Wednesday. Hi everyone! Welcome to L! <laughs> Wednesday is the day that I go to E-Waste, I find stuff, and a lot of times when I bring it back, Stuff is just working okay. There's no repair needed, and so I don't need to delve into this long history of a particular computer unless it's interesting. I don't need to go over the repair because you hit the button and it just works, but it's still interesting. What do I do with this stuff? So what I thought I would do on eWaste Wednesday is I would bring the stuff back to the Retro Hack Shack from eWaste and make a quick video out of what I found. Is that interesting? You be the judge. Take a look at what I've got today. If it's interesting, let me know in the comments below. I might put out a poll. If this is something that you uh, think you might enjoy seeing on a regular basis, I'd love to hear it. Um, but this will help me get through a lot of the backlog of stuff that I have and also help me clear up all of the mess here at the Retro Hack Shack in my garage um, out here, which is becoming a trip hazard. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and delve into the first E-Waste Wednesday. So here are the things I found. These three things, this is just stuff for a TI-99 video I'm working on. I need to fix up some controllers. So don't mind that stuff in the background. But these three things are what I found today at e-waste. And uh, so let's take a look at it one at a time, starting with the least interesting. <laughs> as much as possible, I will try to leave the price tags on this stuff if they have them. In this case, they do. And we'll talk about these individually in a minute, but I'll try to leave those price tags on so you can see that I really am picking this stuff up. Sometimes for really good deals, I think, and sometimes for maybe not so good deals. But I always try to do my best to try to get um, things, uh, you know, on a, for a pretty good price whenever I can. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the first thing that I found, which is these discs here, floppy disks. And uh, I, I was joking with them today because I just happened to say while I was in there, I was like, oh, I can always use more floppy disks. And I bet I'm the only one that ever says I can always use more floppy disks. And he was like, yeah, you're the only one I know that comes in here and <laughs> says you're looking for floppy disks. So let's just start taking a look at what's in here. Here's a uh, unopened iMation TR3 cartridge in the floppy box. Um, and this is actually, I might get rid of this or sell it. I don't know that I need this, but it's uh, 1.6 gigabytes native and uh, 3.2 gigabytes compressed. That's cool. And then also in here, I don't think they knew this was in here, but here's a Motorola phone. I'll have to charge this up. Oh, it's a singular phone. Um, yeah, that's pretty funny. That's a little little bonus for my time today is a little Motorola phone. So I'll have to take a look. I don't even know if I have a charger for something like this. That's pretty funny. And then I like going through these discs. Um, you know, I started without a whole lot of discs, except the ones that I kept from... Um, uh, back when I was, was using floppy disks, I did keep some of my original floppies. Um, and since then I've been collecting these floppy disks and I've got several sets of like Windows 3.11 installation disks or Windows 95 drivers and things like that. So they do come in handy. This one says Italian diction something, opera something something. I don't know what that is. So somebody's got a, uh, Italian diction. I don't know. Is that software? Is that a, I don't know what it is. So that's kind of interesting. I'll have to take a look at that at some point. Over here, we've got backup 2.5. Looks like some more opera diction stuff. Oh, this is German diction. 
That's interesting. Whoever had these must have been either into opera or something. And then here we just have some backups and they just keep going up and up and up. I don't know if this person backed up their stuff every month onto discs, but might be interesting to kind of go in here and at least see what this is for. Okay, the next thing that I found is this Macintosh PowerBook G3 for $20. $20. Uh, it appears to be in pretty good shape, although um, the nice thing is it came with the power adapter, which is one of the harder things to find. When you find something like this, it typically does not come with the power adapter. And if it's a special one, like these Macintosh ones, I'm sure were, looks like I'll need to find a little, uh, the part that goes to the wall. But really, it's just this part is the hardest part to find. If you're, if you are lucky enough to find a, a laptop like this or even an older one, good luck finding the, um, uh, power adapter to it. Now, I will say that there are some generic power adapters that you can get. I even have one that has a adjustable voltage on it uh, just for this particular purpose. And then you can buy a bunch of adapters, but they don't always work. Later on, you know, later uh, laptops after the mid nineties started having some really funky um, uh, power connections. And without the documentation, without knowing what they are, it can be really difficult to power these things up. I had to make my own modification to a Packard Bell laptop um, last year where I basically powered the battery directly instead of trying to figure out what the voltages were on the various pins on the internals of the laptop. And that worked out pretty well. But anyway, really lucky to find this. So let me, uh, let's take a look and see what model this is and what the specs are. I don't know how well this is gonna come out on camera. Um, but here are the specs anyway. It's got a funky tag that's kind of reflective and stuff, so it makes reading it really hard. But it is a Macintosh PowerBook G3 series, as we know, 333 megahertz, uh, 512K cache, 64 megabyte something. I guess that's the RAM. And then a four gigabyte hard drive, eight megs of video RAM, I assume, and a CD drive. So pretty cool. Not super retro or, you know, super old. It's, it's, uh, 1999, it looks like. So, um, yeah, that, that'll work. That's pretty cool. You can see on this side, there is a, uh, the CD ROM itself. And I believe that's just a fan and then a security, uh, thingy over here to lock up this thing nice and tight if you wanted to do that. Um, on the other side, we've got, I guess this is a battery indicator. Let's see. Yeah, very low battery. So I guess this is the battery with the built-in battery indicator and a PCM CIA slot over on this side. And then in the back, of course, we've got power, but then we've also got a whole bunch of ports on this thing. So we've got VGA out, uh, it looks like a modem port. S video out, I think. It has a little S there. I think that might be S video, some form of S video out. There's a SCSI, like a, I don't know what kind of SCSI that is, but I believe that's a SCSI uh, type of port. There's a network port. There is a couple of USB ports. Hey, look at that speaker. And I believe this is a microphone. So yeah, fully loaded with ports to plug in accessories and stuff. So very cool. I'm very happy to see all that stuff in the back there. And this must have been before the days of, I think now, if I remember correctly, Apple puts their logo the other way around so that when you open this up, people can see the Apple right side up. Is that right? Are they doing that now? It's been a while since I've had a MacBook or a Mac with a Apple logo on it. But yeah, this one, if you lift it up, the Apple's going to be upside down. Okay, well, I couldn't find the the AC part of this adapter, but like I said, that'll be a lot easier to source than the than this adapter itself. You can buy aftermarket ones, um, so I'll just have to be on the lookout for the the AC part that goes from here to the wall. Um, but I did have I have some other clamshell G3s um, that are sitting over there, and uh, I found this power supply here, which is the same voltage rating, same amperage and same plug type. You need to be careful of these plugs because there are two different kinds that came kind of close together in history. Um, they both kind of look like a eighth inch uh, audio jack kind of plug with this shield around it. And um, uh, so you just need to be careful. There are two different types. So make sure if you're looking to replace these that you get the right one because one will work and the other one will not. 
Um, anyway, a little word of warning there. Uh, but this particular um, uh, power supply, like I said, is exactly the same. And when I plugged it in, I got a green light that blinked once. Let's see if we can get that again. Okay, plugged it in. Now I'm getting nothing. Originally, though, I did get a green light that blinked once here. So let's just go ahead and open it up. Hit the power button and keep our fingers crossed. I'm hearing a fan. I got a bong. There we go. It appears to be booting up. It's very dim right now, but we'll give this a minute. Sometimes these uh, LCD displays take a minute to warm up if they've been off for a long time. But yeah, it's definitely booting up. So this is a good example of something that I probably wouldn't cover on my channel normally because it just works. You hit the power, it boots up. There's no interesting repairs to do. That's the part that kind of interests me um, is doing the repairs. In fact, I tell the guys at eWaste, you know, when they say like, oh, it might be broken. I'm like, good. Like, I actually appreciate it more if it's broken and it's something I can fix than if something's actually still working. So yeah, this seems to be working fine. Let's let it start up and we'll uh, see what we get. The screen is definitely getting brighter. So let's give it a few minutes. Okay, it appears to be finished booting now. We've got a nice uh, sandy beach kind of a, a background, a Caribbean feel or something like that with some shallow water. Really nice here. Uh, somebody was into that or maybe somebody was working hard and just dreaming of taking a vacation. I don't know. So let's see. Yeah, the touchpad works. Um, and this is the buttons. Yes, that works. Whoops. Network time error. Your Macintosh clock is set to a year before 1973. <laughs> this may cause certain applications to behave erratically. Please use the time and date control panel to set the clock manually. Nice. Okay. Maybe I'll do that. Can I tap on this thing or is this before you could tap on the... No, you can't tap on the touchpad. It's just for moving the mouse around. It's so weird to go back and remember that you couldn't do that not too long ago. Let's see if I can turn up the brightness here. No, the brightness is all the way up. Okay, here's something called Sally's Pictures. Oops, I keep forgetting I can't. I can't tap on that. Okay, these are of kids and stuff, so I'm not going to show that. There's no, uh, don't worry, there's no porn in those folders. Uh, but we've got Microsoft Word. Take a look at that. Word for Mac. Nice. Well, I'm not seeing too much interesting here, but there is Age of Empires on here, so there's a game on here. Should we see if that'll run? I don't know if it needs the CD or not, but let's try it. Oh, yep. Please insert the disc, Age of Empires. Oh, wow. Well. Oh. Well, will it let us play? Can we turn the volume up? There we go. Single player. Oh, you must insert a CD to play a single player game. Uh, that's too bad. And there's some other golden oldies here too. Uh, real player, of course, everybody had to have real player back in the 2000 uh, era here uh, because all of the cool videos uh, you needed real player for. Of course, QuickTime, Netscape Communicator uh, is on here. So that was still big at that point, I remember. And Internet Explorer 5 is on here. Wow, look at that. That is a blast from the past. Does anybody remember using this either at home or work? Microsoft Internet Explorer 5. Yeah, for some reason I can't find Comcast.net because I'm not hooked up to the the network, but there it is in all of its glory. Um, I'm not going to go to any of these these things until I uh, until I get this thing hooked up. But I would say this is a success. It's nice to have. I might go through and clean this up both on the inside and out, make sure there's not a lot of dust and stuff inside. Well, it looks like there may have been a memory upgrade. It says built-in memory is 192 meg. This is Mac OS 9.1. And I'm not a Mac person, so I don't know where you go for any other information on here. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty pretty cool. Um, looks like it's working. It's certainly fast and responsive. So it hasn't lost any speed. Um, so yeah, this was a very nice find for 20 bucks. 
Okay, I set that off to the side to let the battery hopefully charge up for a while. Um, and then we'll move on to the next find, e-waste find on e-waste Wednesday. It's this sharp pocket computer. It says here on the price tag, and it also says right next to that on the cover, um, which is actually really cool. Let's take off this uh, $10 price tag. Not too bad, $10 for a sharp pocket computer. You can't complain at that. But what's really cool about this find is look how clean it is. I mean, this thing is super, super clean and it came with the case. I have a couple of these uh, over in a box over there. And uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty neat, but I haven't seen one in a case like this. And yeah, this looks like it has all of the uh, accessories. There's a, I don't know what that is. It's a pen, a little overlay. I don't know, to take that out and see what that is. Uh, but then there's some more uh, little thing here for a, a chart for so someone knew how to operate some program or other um, on there. It came with the printer, which is really nice, and with the power adapter. So I've got the power adapter, um, and it looks like this was perhaps imported because it's got a European plug on it um, with the US adapter. So that is really cool. Um, but it's kind of gooey, I will say that. Ugh. Uh, but at least it has the adapter. So assuming this thing still works, we should be able to plug this in and see, see if it's working. Assuming the power adapter works, we can see if this actually works. And it looks like it has the cassette backup. I'm assuming that's what this is, uh, cassette backup uh, um, leads here, uh, uh, plugs. So that's really cool. And some extra paper. Wow, and right, look right here, here's the date. 12-9-1983. Uh, Z, I can't read that. Z Intent 2 Family, Intent am, Amity, an, Amity, Intent, I don't know what that says. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, and there's 11-1983. So this was in use back in 1983, and there's even some tic-tac-toe program here. There's a cheat sheet for tic-tac-toe. Blackjack, Hangman, Loaded Games. Let's we'll see if these are still here. ASL. Wow, that's so cool. So this is in really, really nice shape. I don't even want to take it out just now. Um, but I've got this without the case, and you could take this out um, and detach this, the, the computer part here, and uh, uh, use that as, on its own, and then come back and dock it to do your printing or, or whatever. So that is really, really cool. Should we plug it in and just see if it works? Let's try it. And this power adapter is, uh, you can switch it from 110 to 220 volts. So that's really nice too. If I ever go, if I ever want to bring my Sharp uh, Pocket computer with me to Europe, I could do that because I've got the, the right plug or see a similar plug, at least for some countries, and I can switch it to 220. So none of this auto sensing, auto switching business, you had to remember to set this for one or the other. Oh, the printer just went on. I don't know if you can see that over here, the printer just came on when I plugged it in and it's on, look. New, check, new zero, check. Can you see that on screen? There, I've angled this a bit, so maybe you can see. New check. Look at that. So I'm guessing the memory, you know, there's probably a, a coin cell battery in here or something I need to uh, to replace or something, but yeah, it looks like it's working. Um, new check. How do I... Oh, there we go. Okay, I just cleared it. Can I actually put in a program here? Okay, so this is the Sharp PC-1500, um, and this is the same model, actually, as the TRS-80 PC-2. So these could go either way. I knew Sharp made that particular um, uh, model of TRS-80 Pocket PC, uh, but this is the Sharp version, the actual Sharp branded version. Well, I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit more to see if I can get, I can't really get any programs to work, and it's hard to work with just one line of text. But again, really great shape. Probably something I'll have to go in, change out any batteries, make sure there's no leaking stuff going on, and maybe fix this printer on another episode because it apparently is not working correctly. Um, 
Yeah, it just gives me error 78. So something is going on there, maybe some bad caps. So this could come back out in a future episode. Really cool. Not bad for 10 bucks. Well, definitely some nice finds for E-Waste Wednesday. What do you think about E-Waste Wednesday? Is this something worth continuing? Uh, do you want to see the stuff that I'm finding and maybe get some previews of some potential upcoming episodes? Let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll see where this goes. Maybe this will become a semi-regular thing that I do. So another way to show that you like this kind of information is to, or you want to see me doing more E-Waste Wednesdays, is to hit the like button for sure and also subscribe if you haven't done that. And before I wrap up, thanks to all my patrons. I really appreciate your support. Uh, I'll probably put some commentary at the end of this one and share it on my Patre Patreon page. So that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Patrons receive ad-free and early access to content after the episode commentary and, of course, your name in the credits. If you liked that episode, here's a few more you might enjoy, and I thank you for your support. End of line.